Hi guys, uh, I recently released a sample of a mock test having five SBQs, that is five uh, sub questions to each SBQ, making it 25 questions in total. Uh, it was a little disheartening to see that none of the candidates could score above 17, in spite the questions being uh, relatively easy, but yeah, they were tricky. So I thought uh, might as well I'll solve one or two questions with you to make you understand and get you a feel uh, to all those candidates who have not solved any mock test, how the mock test feeling is like and once you solve how you would get your answers and the feedback to it. So here's the first question. A 48 year old patient on warfarin presents with a tender root canal filled upper first molar. Uh, the pain is severe and intermittent and it is more pronounced on biting. He had received a prosthetic heart valve five months ago. So look at the keywords here. A pain is more pronounced on biting. So immediately you're, you should start analyzing that it can be a perior problem. He received a prosthetic heart valve five months ago. It's just five months and it's a heart valve. So somewhere antibiotic profile access question is expected. The tooth is tender on percussion. Again, the question mentions that tooth is tender on percussion. This also mentions it means that somebody has already done the testing for percussion okay the radiographical examination showed that the canal is overfilled but there is no periopical radiolucency so if there is no periopical radiolucency an abscess goes out of the question but there is the tooth is tender on percussion so likely it's going to be a periodontitis case so even before i see my sub questions i have a rough idea as to what this question is going to ask this is very important if you don't analyze the question uh, it's going to be difficult to attempt in the exam so you just see the radiograph and correlate with the question that's matching or not now i have opened uh, this submission of one of the candidates so this is how it would look once you submit the mock test so in the first sub question, uh, based upon the radiograph, the most likely diagnosis for the condition, like I was explaining, it can be a perio case uh, because there is no abscess that is mentioned on the radiograph. So periopical granuloma fractured root is out of the question. Apical scar, apical cyst, no. So periopical periodontitis. Uh, look at the feedback, what is written? Tenderness to biting and percussion indicate inflame, inflammation of PDL and the overfilled canals provide a likely cause. Although no radiolucency shown on the radiograph, but it is not required for diagnosis in presence of a typical symptoms. So uh, almost all questions have a feedback if it's necessary for a better understanding. So this helps you to analyze why you have marked the right answer and what was the logic behind marking the right answer. Uh, we'll come to another sub question also where this candidate has marked it wrong and you would again see the feedback as to how it is. So the second sub question is uh, the patient record showed that he is not a regular attendee due to living in a regional area. Keywords here are not a regular attendee, meaning if you give him some long treatment plan like a re city, he may not turn up. Plus he's living in a regional area, so it's difficult to get specialists around there. So the recommended treatment in this case, now see the keyword here is this case. They did not mention uh, in a normal scenario, it said in this case. This case means the patient is not a regular attendee and is living in a regional area. Basically the question is trying to tell you what treatment can you done, do in one shot and relieve the patient of pain. The one shot treatment will always be an extraction. So uh, why also extraction? Because if you remember, he got a prosthetic heart valve replacement, correct? So look at the feedback. The patient at risk of infective endocarditis has a prosthetic heart valve which is associated with increased risk of infective card endocarditis. So we have to remove any source of infection and it can be done only by exodontia, that is extraction or another root canal filling. But in this scenario, root canal filling is not possible because he is not a regular attendee and lives in a regional area. Hence, the answer becomes extraction. You understood? There is always a logic behind any answer. You cannot just uh, mark whatever you want. The patient had a prosthetic heart valve replacement done five months ago. Is he at a risk of infective endocarditis? Now, most of the people got this answer wrong. Why is that? Because you have not studied TG properly, which is what I keep on mentioning in all my videos. Study TG, study order, revise, and to all my enrolled candidates, I have made them study TG like five times, you know. 
I understand the importance of TG. That's why I always am behind. Okay, so uh, this particular candidate marked the answer as C and D, which is uh, need antibiotic prophylaxis preoperatively and postoperatively, which becomes a wrong answer. Now, in case you're solving one of my mock tests and you mark a wrong answer, this is how you're going to get the result, a big red cross. And you would be given the right answer like this. It is needed only preoperatively. So this is the feedback and this is how the answer you're going to get. Next sub question, the primary consideration during treatment of this patient. Now again, uh, the question did not say the primary consideration during treatment of any tooth having pain. It mentioned this patient. When I say this patient, I need to see his overall health and then the dental health. If the overall health was healthy and the complaint was only dental health, then my answer should have been stop the pain. But here my overall health has a condition and that is infective endocarditis. So my main concern now becomes remove the source of infection. So you see it's a pretty simple question. But when you read the question properly and try and understand what actually they are asking. A dental scenario or this patient scenario. Then your answer changes. And this is what is a thin line between you passing and failing the ADC exam. So here the answer becomes remove any source of infection. So again, the feedback correctly mentions to you, the patient is at a risk of infective endocarditis and life is more important. So all the potential sources of infection should be eradicated. The same principle you follow when you are treating a thalassemia or a hemophilia patient. There, removing the tooth, we don't give much importance, but we give importance to saving the tooth because removing can create a lot of bleeding uh, when there are bleeding disorders. But in case of cardiac conditions, removing is like more preferred because the source of infection has to be removed. So it becomes a this patient scenario, not a dental scenario. I hope you are understanding what I am saying. Another question. Post-operative extraction instructions are necessary regarding the risk of endocarditis. Which statement is wrong? Now many of uh, questions like this are going to come. Which statement is correct? Which of the following is incorrect? All are correct except, you know, such questions. So here which statement is wrong, which means the rest of the statements are correct. So first is alert for signs and symptoms of endocarditis. That's true. The symptoms may be of acute onset and uh, progress rapidly or persist for weeks or months before cardiac sign develops. See, whenever any symptom is of acute onset, you will have uh, the cardiac signs also immediately. Always remember how we have learned endocarditis, subacute bacterial endocarditis. So it has to be subacute and not acute. So that option becomes wrong. Uh, C and D options are correct. So just one word, the missingness of the sub in the acute made your answer. You understand? So each word, each simple word or three letter word can just change your answer. So this is how every question is. Every mock test has one scenario based question, which has five sub questions A clinical picture may or may not be avoided. And every question mostly like most of the questions have detailed feedbacks or simple feedbacks, making you understand as to why you're doing that. And when you get an answer wrong, read, understand the feedback so that you don't do any mistake. So one mock test has like 70 questions uh, and you revise all of them. You get a lot of theory knowledge. You get a lot of other knowledge. So this is how the mock test with me is like. I hope you understand pretty much how it is. Um, best of luck for your studies.